Hey everyone, it's Graham Coleman with Daily Extra and I'm speaking with Darnell Moore, a writer and activist who's known for his work within the queer, black and feminist movements. Thank you for speaking with us. I'm glad to be speaking with you. So you have worked on Black Lives Matter. Sure. Can you tell us about your role within that movement? So Black Lives Matter is a, um, a movement that was catalyzed by three women, three friends of mine, Alicia Garza, Patrice Cullors and Opal Tometi. Um, the actual hashtag was created in 2012 and it was created in response to an apparent lack of um, regard for black life. That is, whether it's captured on tape or, or audio or not, um, we experience the continual deaths of black folk at the hands of police um, and vigilantes who've gotten off of impunity. George Zimmerman is still free and walking while Trayvon Martin is dead. In a country that continues to demonstrate that black life doesn't really mean anything. Right. They wanted to say that black lives actually matter. All black lives, straight folk, um, queer and trans individuals, the disabled, the undocumented, the imprisoned. It's now become a hashtag um, that has taken on flesh and has become a, a movement call, and I, along with Patrice Cullors, organized, co-organized the Black Lives Matters ride to Ferguson, which brought about 500 people from across the country and Canada, wow. who drove from as far as LA, um, drove across the country, or across borders, into Ferguson, so that we could be standing in solidarity with Mike Brown's family and with others who were interested in ending state violence. Los Angeles is showing up to Ferguson because black lives matter. Ohio, New York, Tennessee, Connecticut, New Jersey, Texas is traveling to Ferguson, Missouri because black lives matter. In the age of Oprah, in the age of Tyler Perry, in the age of Magic Johnson, some of us have become well known only because we were killed by police. Mm. And our lives are now celebrated under the guise of a hashtag. It seems like queer people of color aren't just supporting movements like Black Lives Matter. Now some of them are running them. Do you feel like queer people of color are becoming more valued and visible? So uh, just to, you know, uh, two of the three black women behind Black Lives Matter identify as queer. And a lot of the individuals um, in, in Ferguson, Millennial Activists United is a group that was, um, and it has been very prominent in its work. Um, uh, Maybe three or four of them also identify as queer and are lesbian and are gay. Mm. Um, there are a lot of individuals across the country working within um, various organizations, Black Youth Project, Millennial Activists United, individuals who are not connected to any organizations but who, at the, who are at the forefront of this work who identify as queer and trans. Um, and this is no different than, than than any of the move, any of the sort of movement moments within black history in the United States. Um, queer people didn't just show up, trans people did not just show up. What is heralded as the sort of contemporary uh, LGBT movement moment, Stonewall, this is an LGBT movement, but trans folk and gender nonconforming folk of color were pivotal to that. Um, and in the civil rights movement, and pr prior to the civil rights movement, black, queer, and trans folk have always, and gender nonconforming folk have always been present. Um, from Bayard Rustin to so many other nameless folk. I mean, Lorraine Hansberry, June George. I mean, I can go on and on with names of individuals who were not um, heterosexual identified or gender conforming. So what I don't want to do is to sort of create this narrative as if we just showed up. Right. You know, we've always been here. Black, LGBT, I, A folk have always been in movements. There is no better moment to gather around the concept of love and the act of love, and dare I say, black love. Can y'all say black love? Black love. It is a moment where in black people around the world are constantly on the receiving end of lovelessness. Some of us literally fight to live every day in communities 
where our queer and trans identities turn us into shooting targets. You've worked on a variety of advocacy projects. What are you focusing your energy on right now? So it's often hard to, to name one thing, mm -hmm. um, partially because we exist in a moment where, you know, um, I'm a black, gay-identified um, person who lives in Brooklyn, New York, in Bed-Stuy. Um, my life is, is defined by multivariable identities. So for me, it's hard to sort of select one. You know, I can't just focus on um, racial justice without also focusing on justice for LGBTQ people, without also focusing on justice for those of us who are living within urban spaces within America, um, facing a variety of things like gentrification and economic disenfranchisement. So I would say in, in a nutshell that what I try to do is to have a very interconnected and intersectional approach to social justice issues, mm. to human rights issues. And that's, that's really what my focus has always been and what I hope um, I can continue to be pushed to sort of focus on. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for speaking with us. I'm glad to be um, in conversation with you. Our hearts are